Well, thank you very much, Rudyard. It's a great pleasure to be back uh, to the Monk debates. When I was last here a couple of years ago, I'd just returned from the front line of the war in Ukraine, where I was with the Ukrainian armed forces. And for most of the last eight months, I've been in Israel and Gaza uh, following the war there as closely as I can. And I won't go into all the details now that I could give you of what's happening. But I would just put it in perspective in this way, first of all. What happened on the 7th of October was not just a massive attack on innocent people inside Israel. It was the equivalent to about 6,000 Canadians being massacred and burned in their homes in one day. It was the equivalent of about 1,500 of your fellow Canadians being taken hostage. You know, you would have thought after an attack like the one that Hamas instigated that started this terrible war, you would have thought that there would be some sympathy for the world, from the world. You might have thought the world would pay attention to the attack and at least pay attention to the people behind it. You might have expected, like me, that there might have been a worldwide opposition to the terrorists and rapists and murderers of Hamas. You might have thought there would be hatred around the world erupting that the government of Qatar and its mouthpiece and Al Jazeera, its funding of Hamas and its hosting of the leadership of Hamas in Qatar. You might have thought there'd have been an outpouring of rage at the Islamic Revolutionary government in Tehran, but no, there was an immediate outpouring of rage against the state that had been attacked. Bring back our girls we had 10 years ago in the war in Ni northern Nigeria, which I also covered. Bring back our girls. No international campaign saying bring back our Jewish children. Believe all women, we've been told for years. But, turns out, not if the raped women are Jews. Israel is the only country in the world which, when it's attacked, gets attacked more. You know, the interesting thing about anti-Semitism is, as my late friend Jonathan Sachs said, it's a shape-shifting virus. It moves across the centuries. When you could hate people for their religion, the Jews were hated for their religion. Then you couldn't hate people for that anymore, so people hated the Jews for their race. And then, after the 20th century, people realized that wasn't such a great idea either. Now, the Jews are hated not for their religion or their race, but for having a state People around the world hate them so much for it that Israelis are attacked when they have hostages taken, and this is to remember the 100 hostages still in captivity in Gaza, who if they were given back by Hamas today, the war would be over. And they're also attacked when they rescue their hostages. You know, the interesting thing about anti-Semitism is the Jews can never win because historically they've been hated for being rich and for being poor. They've been hated for integrating and for not integrating. They were hated for being stateless. Remember, rootless cosmopolitans, the far right used to say. And now they're hated for having a state. Today, the only really acceptable form of anti-Semitism, aside from the sewers of the far right, the only real tolerated form of anti-Semitism is anti-Zionism. And Zionism, as we just heard, is simply the, the right of the Jews to self-determination in their historic homeland. That's all. Anti-Semitism, as we've also just heard, is double standards against Jewish people or cruel and unfair treatment of people because they're Jews. This isn't very far away from home here. If this isn't anti-Semitism, can the audience here tell me why the following things have happened since October the 7th? Why in a Montreal suburb a synagogue should be firebombed, as happened in November? Why there should have been gunshots against the yeshiva? Why in Toronto a bookstore owned by a Jew should be attacked? Why a Molotov cocktail was thrown through a Jewish community centre in Montreal? Why a Toronto Jewish deli in North York was firebombed? 
why in Toronto the Orthodox synagogue was vandalized, why in Toronto two men opened fire the other week on a Jewish girls' school. If it isn't anti-Semitism, tell me why just a week ago pro-Hamas protesters tried to go through Jewish areas in this city shouting, not just Allahu Akbar, but, and I quote, sorry for the language, fucking filthy fucking Zionist pigs, dirty Zionist rats. Have you heard that language before? The Jews have. Now look, if you are interested in this motion, just bear this in mind. It's not about Netanyahu, it's not about this war, it's about double standards. And one question hovers over it above all. The question of who would protect the Jews? Who would you trust to protect them? The Europeans? The Arab world? No. History shows only one people will protect the Jewish people. The Jewish people. That's what Zionism is. Thank you.